I'm excited about the message because it's from a personal experience, uh, even now, and things that I've experienced in the past. But this relates to, to you, whether it's concerning things that you've been through uh, in the past, something that you's go you're going through now. You know, Jesus said um, that in this world, we're going to have tests, trial, tribulation. We're going to go through stuff. It's going to happen. Um, some of us, we're going to cause it on ourselves, and, but some of us, it's just going to happen because we're down here. But then he said what? Be of good cheer, because I will overcome the world. I have overcome the world. I'm going to take this time right now, uh, Mr. Dave, to switch my mic so I can free my hand up, sir. You don't know I don't normally speak. But anyway, um, so he said, be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. So things do happen, but this message is to encourage, is, is, is to inspire, but most important is to remind you to put yourself in remembrance of. The title of my message is Recall. Yeah. Recall. And I'm going to mention some of the definitions of that word recall. Um, um, but, you know, it's important, especially when we're in a tough time to recall to think back, even one of the praise songs, it says, I remember, you know? So when you think back, you say, well, man, I've never been to where I'm at right now. I've never experienced this before. But if you live long enough, you can recall what he's done for you, yeah. what he did for you, what he's doing for you. Yeah. And although you may be in something that you've never been in before, if you think back, if you recall, the same God that was then, he is now. Yeah. Right. And if he did it then, he'll do it again. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I, I want to read some of the definitions of the word recall. Uh, and these are just some of the Webster definitions or whatever that I looked up. It, it is to ask or order. I like that word, order. To return. To remember. To recollect. To be reminiscent of, seem similar to. Maybe, you know, you're going through something now or dealing with something. It seems similar. It's not identical, but it seems similar. Or maybe you've heard it from somebody else and now you're dealing with it. It seems similar. But I want to pause right there and just let you know, just because he did it a certain way one, one, one time doesn't mean he's going to do it the same way now That's right. or in the future. What we should do, what we have to do, what we must do is rely on him and trust yes. him. Yes. And the Holy Spirit, just like he spoke, to, Jesus spoke to Peter, we have that Holy Spirit speaking to us to guide us in every situation. He's not resisting and pulling back from guiding us. Amen. He's not leaving you out there and just like, hey, fight for yourself. No, he's not like that. He's speaking. We may not be hearing, but he's speaking. Amen. So seems similar to, to bring back to mind, remembrance of what has been learned or experienced. Or we can say reminded of what has been learned or experienced. So we should understand, and I just want to read some of the things as I was preparing this message. And uh, thank you, Janine, for giving me such an awesome backdrop. You know, I give her a shout out. She, she, she does awesome with that. But anyway, as I was preparing, you know, I, I, the Holy Spirit, you know how you, even if it's not a message, as you read the word with the Holy Spirit, he'll give you just things in your spirit that, that relates to what you're reading about. And so I just, if you can bear with me, I want to read some of the things that, that, that came up as I was preparing for this message, some statements. Uh, so we should understand that we are all stars in Jesus Christ. You know, we're coming as our favorite movie star, but... Amen. We're all stars in Jesus Christ. And speaking of that, we're going to have an amazing time. We're going to give out awards this, this afternoon for the best outfits and all those type of things. It's going to be a good time for that. But in reference to stars, we are all stars in him. In other words, we are light. We represent him on this earth. So, so Father Abraham, remember Jesus told Father Abraham, he told him to, to look now toward heaven. And count the stars, if you are able to number them, so shall your descendants be. In other words, he said, go look. And if you can count, so shall your, your descendants be. And spiritually, we're spiritually saying, you know, if you look at it in light of the scripture, 
We call him Father Abraham. That's how we relate to him. But, but most importantly, the word of God says that we, you and I, if you're born again, we are ambassadors. We represent Jesus down here yeah. Yeah. on this earth. We represent Jesus, an ambassador, an authorized messenger or representative, an authorized messenger or representative. Look at Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, and I'll be reading from different versions uh, this morning. Luke chapter 9 and verse number 9. It says, then Jesus called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Amen. So he gave them power and authority. Yes. You have power and authority. Yes. Not being mindful or recalling, uh, we will allow ourselves to think or behave contrary to who we actually are right now in Jesus. If we're not mindful, if we're not thoughtful, if we don't recall, we, 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 it's difficult or we'll find ourselves behaving or thinking contrary to who we actually are right now in Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, naturally speaking, when I was, you know, in elementary school... Or, or, or high school or whatever, and I would go out with friends, you know, primarily my dad, he's like, boy, don't, don't forget who you represent. That's right. <laughs> don't forget your last name, you're yeah. a dimps. You know, in other words, what you do is gonna reflect on us. Right. Right. And uh, so he would say that, of course, I didn't listen all the time. <laughs> right? I didn't listen all the time. I think I told the story one time where I did something. My dad retired from Orange County Sheriff, and so I did something. We lived in Orlando. I was a teenager, and I got caught by an Orange County Sheriff deputy. <laughs> and so he called me over, and you know, like those cops do. He's like, you got my name and everything, and, and, uh, and he found out it's Dems. He said, uh, are you related to Lewis Dems? And at that time, my dad was still on the force. I said, yes, sir. He said, son, you'd be better off coming with me. <laughs> I said, yes, sir. I sure will. Because he knew my daddy. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to go with him, but that didn't turn out too well. <laughs> so that's important that we realize who we represent. So we are ambassadors of Jesus Christ. Whether you feel like it or not, if you are born again, you have his spirit on the inside of you. When you step in a room, you represent Jesus. When you're dealing with your kids, you represent Jesus. When you're loving your wife, your husband, you represent Jesus. As he is, where? Ooh, man, y'all sound good already. Look at Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. Now I'm going to read from the Message Bible. But when the time arrived that was set by God, the Father, God sent his Son, born among us of a woman, born under the conditions of the law, so that he might redeem those of us who have been kidnapped by the law. Thus we have been. You're not waiting to be set free. You're free right. in Jesus. Amen. You're complete in him. Yes. Thus, we have been set free to experience our rightful heritage. Yes. You can tell for sure that you are now fully adopted as his own children because God sent the spirit of his son into your yes. lives, Amen. crying out, Papa! Yes. Father, yes. Come on. doesn't that privilege of intimate conversation with God make it plain that you are not a slave, yes. but a child? Yes. You're yes. his child. Amen. So in your spirit, and I'm, you know, I'm going to probably mention this often because you don't always feel. Come on. And you're not going to always feel. 
But we're going to deal with later that even when the feeling's not there, the victory's there. Yeah. Even when the, the, the pain is there, the victory's there. Yeah. Even when the hurt seems like it's not going away, the victory's there. Even right. when the bad habit seems to come over and over, the victory is still there. Yeah. That's right. Doesn't the privilege of the intimate conversation with God make it plain that you are not a slave but a child? And if a child, you're also an heir with complete access to the inheritance. Yes. You have access. We have access to the inheritance. But it's difficult to find out what inheritance we have if we don't search the scriptures for ourselves. That's so important that we do that. Because, you know, God, God works through people. Yes, he, does. he speaks through people. Right. You know, we uh, come up here and minister every Sunday. But how many of you know folks go to sleep? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes folks don't return your phone call or your text. But somewhere I read that he's a father that never sleeps or slumbers. Amen. That he's always with us. And he's there for us. So we sometimes forget who we really are and think because we have sin scars left on our physical body or in our thoughts of the past, that is who we are. But that's not true. I mean, you may have a, a sin scar from something that you've done that physically caused a scar on your, on your body. Or, or hurt or, or something that, you know, from you doing something or from you thinking a certain way and we think, you know, that I'm connected to that. I mean, Pastor Shannon touched on that. But that's, that's not who you are. That's, right. that's not your identity. Amen. You know, we shouldn't uh, allow ourselves to be connected. Yeah, yeah, that happened. Yeah, we may have done it. Yeah, we may have said it. But that's not who we are. And Satan will try to keep us there. And sometimes our own thoughts will try to keep us there, but it's not true. So we sometimes forget who we really are and think because we have sin scars left on our physical body or in our thoughts of the past, that's who we are and it's not true. That's why it's so important to renew our mind with the Word of God. Yeah. That's right. It's so important to renew our mind with the Word of God and, 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 and allow ourselves to continually see who we are in Christ Jesus and act out that new person in Christ Jesus because we are new creatures in Christ. So we should spend less time talking about our failures in who we used to be and more time talking about who we are right now in Christ Jesus. Yes, sir. You know, sometimes I'll hook up with some of my friends of the past and they say, oh, Tater, you remember. Oh, Tater, you remember. You remember this. You remember that. And I find myself like, man, it's like, man, you know, that's umpteen years ago. You know, not that I didn't do it, but that doesn't represent me now. Amen. You know, because that gets you to feel in a certain way when you dwell on those things. Yeah. It's like, no, I'm not going to. I'm not denying it didn't happen or I didn't do it. But, you know, hey, let's move forward. Right. Let's move forward in Jesus, right? So in the Message Bible, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, in verse uh, 21, it says, God put the wrong. This is awesome. God put the wrong on him who never did anything wrong. That's right. Mm. He put it on him so we could be put right with God. Hallelujah. So we didn't even put ourselves right with God. He put the wrong on Jesus. So right now, you are put right with him. Right. You, are, you are right. You not can't get right. You are right. Come on, man. So don't call yourself that. I'm always doing, always doing, always no. No, that, that, you still have a body to deal with. You still have a mind to be renewed. Come on. But if you, if you died right now, as I always say, nothing about you is going to change. Amen. But as we spend time here on this earth, we renew our minds with the word of God. We act out, become more like, we put ourselves in remembrance of who we are in Christ Jesus. We recall and we act out our true real identity yes. in Christ, right? Amen. So it's believing and confessing God's word that creates a reality of it in our lives. It's believing. That's how we started this thing out. By believing and confessing. And that's what we continue to do. 
that creates a reality. Notice it doesn't create truth. The truth is already there. The word of God is true. But we want that truth to become a reality in our lives. And it's a daily thing. It's, it's, it's from here until we breathe our last breath. We don't never arrive down here. <laughs> we never arrive. We're always on a journey. We're always walking with him. We're always running our race because we have a race to run. So what the Bible says about who you are in Christ Jesus is not a promise. It's a statement of fact. It's not a promise. It's a statement of fact of who you really are right now in Christ Jesus. And I want to look at uh, Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Peter and John recalled. And I love this scripture. They recalled who their father was. They reminded themselves of who their God is. And this is what we should do when we face a challenging circumstance. Mm -hmm. And if we pick up with verse number 21 of Acts chapter 4, you know, and this is when they were, they were threatened. They were told, you know, shut up, stop talking about this Jesus stuff. You know, they had just done, Jesus done a miracle through them. And it's like, be quiet. They threatened. Back in those days, you know, they, they didn't just talk about you. They whipped you. You know, you talk about Jesus and you didn't listen. So here we pick up in verse number 21. It says, so when they had farther threatened them, they let them go, finding no way to, of punishing them because of the people. Since they all glorified God for what had been done. Yeah. Verse number 23. And being let go, they went to their own company. That's why it's so important to just watch who you hang out with. Yeah. You know, you're going through some stuff. Don't, don't, you, know, you may have to cut Chester off. That's right. You know? You, you, yeah, you may have to cut him off. You, you may have to cut Susie May off. Because that's not good company to be in because they're going to pull you further and further down in the humdrum. And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders said to them. So when they heard that, they raised their voice. Amen. Last week in, 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 our, in our D group, you know, uh, Mama Linda blessed me because she said, you know, sometimes you have those thoughts. She goes, I just speak right out loud. And I go, no, you know, just amen. So you hear yourself saying it because you have an inner ear and you have an outer ear. And it just blesses you. She goes, I say, no, you know, I'm not accepting that. And that's what we have to do. So right here, you may be raising your voice and you're by yourself. Right? It's not because, you know, you're around a bunch of people. Here they're around a bunch of people. But they raised their voice to God with one accord and said. Or you can say they raised their voice to God with one accord and recalled and remembered. Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea. And all that is in them. Then they went on to say about what you did, what he did through David. And if you pick up in verse number 29, after they talked about how big their God is, mm -hmm. after they recalled, they remembered, yes, sir. Yeah. they dwelled on, they bragged on. Amen. Verse number 29, it says, now, Lord, look on their threats. Or you can say, you know, now, Lord, look on this situation in my life. He's already aware of it. Grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching forth your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Amen. Look at verse number 31. And when they had prayed, or we can say, and when they had recalled, God is not changing here. They're changing. That's right. They're changing their focus, That's right. their, their, their alignment, That's right. their sight picture. And when they had prayed or recalled, the place where they were assembled together was shaken and and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. In other words, 
Nothing changed with the situation. But as they, re- as they focused on God, as they recalled, remembered how big their God is, the place where they were was shaken and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Let me ask you this. Was the Holy Spirit on the inside of them already? Yes, he was. He was there the whole time. But they brought themselves up on the inside to him. And once they got to him, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God with boldness when they were told not to. So I'm saying life is going to happen. Things are going to happen. People are going to talk. People are going to hurt. Pain may seem like it don't want to leave. But when I put myself or when you put yourself in remembrance of what he done, what he is, who he is in you, through you, for you. My God, because you have the spirit of our father on the inside of you, you got to come up with a shout. Because it's in you. You're not waiting to get anything. It's in us. He's in us. Amen. Right now, he's on the inside of us. So they spoke the word of God with boldness. Look at Psalms chapter uh, 19. I love the word of God. And and that's what the Holy Spirit does, you know. We put ourselves, you know, because I've been there. I've been there. Depression, you know. And I don't like it when folks, you know, talk about people because if you've experienced something, you have more compassion yeah. for people that have been there. Yeah. You know? You say, well, what do you have to be depressed about? Yeah. You know, it's the enemy, really, that boils down to when it comes right. to that. Oh, come on. You know? That's right. And, um, but it, and ha- have we, are we delivered? Do we have the word of God? Absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, when we focus on the word of God and, uh, and allow ourselves right in the midst of it, we're going to touch on that. To focus on him and bring ourselves back to remembrance of who we are and, and the word of God. We cannot be depressed. It's That's impossible right. yeah. because right. you have life on the inside of you. I'm not saying you, you condemning you. I'm not saying that. It's just we have a part to play. That's right. I had a part to play. Yes. Come on. Psalms chapter 19 and, and verse 1. It says the heavens okay, declare the glory of God. Yeah. And the firmament shows and proclaims his handiwork. Day after day pours forth speech. Night after night shows for uh, shows faith, shows forth knowledge. There is no speech nor spoken word from the stars. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice uh, in evidence goes out. All through all the earth, their sayings to the end of the world. Of the heavens has God made a tent for the sun. In other words, what he's saying is, you really want to know who your daddy is? You really want to know who your papa is? Just go look at his creation. You know, when I was working the morning shift, in law enforcement, you get up early in the morning, I would walk out. And before getting in my patrol car, I would look up at the sky. And I'll just stare at the stars. And it's like, man, that's, I, I'm, I, I call him, I can call him father. And no matter what I face today, as scared as I may get or so whatever I may face, I'm looking at these stars. This is my father. Yes. And, and I, I, I heard that oftentimes, is, is when through darkness, when you're in your darkest moment or when it's the darkest in the sky is when the stars shine the brightest. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. And wow. it's in your darkness, it's in your weakness Come on. that he's your strength. Yeah. He's always your strength, but he magnifies it in your time of weakness, in, in your darkest moment. Yeah. When there's nobody else to talk to but him. You're never alone. Yes. And we can look at his creation and see who our Father God is. In the Message Bible, yeah, in the Message Bible, that same 
those same scriptures, it says, God's glory, verse number one, uh, the Message Bible, Psalms 19, it says, God's glory is on tour in the skies. God craft on exhibit across the horizon. Madam Day holds classes in the morning and says, uh, kids, look, 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 look. This is your father. That's Madam Day. Look, this is your father. Professor Knight lectures his students in the evening. Students, pay attention. Look at the stars. That's your daddy. Their words aren't heard. In other words, the stars are not speaking. You can't hear them, but they're speaking. The moon, you can't hear it, but it's speaking. Their words are, aren't heard. Their voices aren't recorded, but their silence fills the earth. Unspoken truth is spoken everywhere. Amen. All you got to do. No, you may not be able to call mama, daddy, cousin, grandma, sister, brother. But even if you don't even know a scripture, just go out and look at God's creation. And allow your heart to connect with that. And when you do, when we do, something because we have his spirit on the inside of us yes. is going to connect with your spirit. And your spirit is going to illuminate your mind with how good your father God is. Right. Just by looking at his creation. Yes. Amen. Because he's a good God. Yes. And he wants to encourage in every way, shape, or form. And he'll use whatever ministers to you the most to minister to you. Amen. Whatever you can relate to the most. It could be anything or anybody. But he'll speak to you through that to encourage you, to remind you, to help you recall how good he is. Look at um, uh, Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. And uh, we, we've read this story before also. But I just want to cover some of it, not all of it. And it's in reference to the prodigal son. And, um, and let's start with verse number 14. And this is after he had went out. He told his dad pretty much, you know, I don't want nothing to do with you. Give me my money. I want to go party. You know, I, I want to go have a life outside. Let me go. So verse number 14, it says, but when he had spent all, he was out there. He had spent all. <coughs> There he arose, uh, there arose a severe famine in the land, and he began to be in lack, or began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed the swine, to feed the pigs. Verse number 16. And he would have, uh, he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate. In other words, my dad used to have hogs. We called it hog slop. He would have gladly have filled his stomach with the hog slop. Oh, he was hungry. He was so hungry. And no one gave him anything. But look like this. But when he came to himself, verse number 17. But when he came to himself, but when he recalled. <coughs> When he recalled, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? Come on. Wow. He recalled, and by him recalling in his, his deepest, darkest moment, he recalled when he was there with the pigs and, and the hog slop, and he's looking at the hog slop. It's like, I, can w I wish I could eat some of this hell, hell, hog slop, but nobody's giving me none. But he didn't. He recalled. He said, I'm looking at this hog slop, but I do remember, even at my daddy's house, they had some good baked bread with butter on it. <laughs> And while he's down there looking at the hog slop, he said, verse number 18, I will arise and go to my father's and, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. And I'm, I want to tell you that 
It's difficult, it's impossible to arise or get up from hurt, failure, or disappointment without first getting up on the inside. Come on. Yes. You have to get up in here first. And by getting up in here, just like he did, he recalled, he recalled, he recalled while he was down. And after recalling, just from him thinking about that, it caused him physically to get up and start going towards the fog. The plain English version says, at last he started to think properly. That's, they, don't, they don't have it there, but that's, that's what the plain English version said. The plain, I like plain English. Y'all are Southern boy, you know. Sometimes you have to get definitions for some of the words I use. Yeah. Just plain English or, or T's translation. You all know, sometimes I go to T's translation. The plain English said, at, at last he started to think properly. But what's amazing is that positionally, positionally, the father never saw the son as being lesser. That's right. Although the son's behavior was different. The father never saw him as being lesser. And once again, oftentimes we go back to what we've done, what we said, our sin scars and thoughts and things like that. And we, we, we judge that. We base that our relationship going to the father and our acceptance from the father based on what we have done right. or what we are doing. And that's not how he sees us. He sees us complete in him. I think it's 1 Corinthians 1.30 or 1, 2.30 or something like that. Jesus is our righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Amen. He's your righteousness. He's your sanctification. He's your redemption. And you did none of that. All you have to do is accept him and believe. Yes. So when you recall who you are and who your daddy is, yes. it's easier for you to arise and go. <laughs> arise and speak. Arise and stand, yes. even when things have changed. I wanted to ask. I want to ask one of my youths. We have awesome youth. Where's, where's Isaac? Come on, man. he's he's a little reluctant. Give him a hand. He's an awesome kid. He's gonna help Pastor T out. Thank you, my man. We have some amazing youth, y'all. Isn't he a good-looking young man? I'm not, I told him, I go, man, I'm not going to make you, I'm not going to make you say, so, say anything. Just do whatever Pastor T tells you to do. And uh, so when I, when I grew up, just stand here and make me look good right now. So when I grew up, you know, I used to watch wrestling. Remember I told you all earlier that oftentimes God will take the simple things, whether it's plant life or, you know, um, I don't know, your job, anything. He'll minister to you through that because that's something that you may enjoy you know, a, a craft or a hobby. Music. Music, yep. Well, you know, I just love sports. I love watching yes. sports. And oftentimes, I just get encouraged because I see, you know, you can see in some athletes, you know, whether they're going to do good or bad, oftentimes by what they say. Right. Yes. right. Or you can just tell. They can dress up and put on all the fancy uniform all they want to. Like my dad used to say, you know, when it comes to football and you put the pads on, that's when you tell the men from the boys. That's right. Yeah. Right? You can have all the name brand. But when I was growing up, we used to watch wrestling a lot. You know, wrestling used to come on on Saturdays. And I think back in the day, they had the Eddie Graham uh, Sports Stadium on the east side of Orlando. Some of y'all remember that? Yeah. Eddie Graham. And so on Saturday, wrestling used to come on, right? And uh, so we'd get around TV. And there wasn't no pay per view. You didn't have to pay for nothing back then. <laughs> it was free. And so. We gonna watch them. My, my, some of my favorite was like Dusty Rhodes, right, right, J Junkyard Dog. Call them out. Who? Somebody said somebody else. Rick Flair, baby. Come on. Woo. Say it again. Briscoe, Briscoe, the Briscoe brothers. Um, Andre the Giant, all those guys, right? Dick the Bruiser. Dick the Bruiser. Uh, one of my favorite was Sweet Brown Sugar. I love Sweet Brown Sugar. You know. So, so back in the day, you know, you, you got the star wrestler, Dusty Rhodes or whoever. And so, of course, these guys are acting, but they act better now, back then than they do now. And so you got the star wrestler, you know, he, he's getting beat down. I'm just telling how you do what Pastor T tell you to do, right? And so he's getting beat down. So you hit Pastor T on the top of the head and 
boom, he, he goes down and hit him again, and boom, he goes down and hit him again, and boom. I mean, you, you kind of enjoy it, aren't you? I didn't do anything to hurt you. Okay. Don't say nothing in youth group. Okay. And he hit him again, and, and he, boom, and he, he, he goes down. But you know what's funny? You know, while, while they're down, and so, you know, this guy's got his hand on his head. And, and so, somewhere on the inside, just the road, he'll hit him again. He gets stronger, and he'll hit him again. And he gets stronger, and he'll hit him again. And he gets stronger, and then he'll hit him again. And he gets even stronger, because on the inside, he's just rising up. And then the people start cheering and I'm yelling at the TV, get him, Dustin Rose, get him, get him, get him. And, and, and then he, and he hit him again, and he gets stronger. And he hit him again, and then next thing you know, he grabs him and he goes, boom. And then he starts to go down, boom. And he starts to go down, boom. And he starts to go down, and he goes, boom. And while he's down like that, he stay right there, he runs over to the ropes. He gets on, stay down, I'm gonna jump on top. He gets on top, stay there, don't you get up. Don't you get up. And so, and so, on the count of three, he, 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 one, two. No, I'm not going So, he jumped on top of him, boom. And everybody, yeah, that's the road, that's the road. Come on up. Give him a hand, give him a hand. So, so that, that's acting. That's acting, right? But that, 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 that is, you ain't going nowhere yet. That encouraged you. You think about it. Yeah. So let's go back down. I'm going, I'm going down. You stay. Put your hand on my head. I've been here. I, I've been here. Where I, positionally, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Yes. Positionally, I'm healed. Position, positionally, I'm free from this habit that I've had for years and years and years. Positionally, God has healed me from the hurt, from family, friends. Positionally, I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. But life seems to continue to hit me. And I continue to see myself through my scars, through my hurt, through my pain. But while I'm in the mud, the mire, I begin to think. While in that depression, I begin to consider who I am. I recall what he's done for me, who he is in me, and who I am in him. And even through every hit, I, I, I rise up on the inside. It, it's nothing is happening that has already not happened. In other words, Jesus has been to the cross and he's not going back. You're complete in him. I'm complete in him. I have the victory. But as I continue to think, every time I'm hit, how good God is. What he's done for me. Every time he hits me, every time I go through something, I think back, I recall, if he did it then, he will do it again. And I've come to realize that now when I go through stuff and I know I'm not alone, thinking this way, I know there's many others out there. When you go through, you can think back how good God was. And yes, it may knock you down. But you're not out for the count. That's how you may feel on the outside, but positionally, you're victorious. P positionally, you're free from sin. Positionally, you have the victory. Positionally, all your needs are met. But we have to first rise up here before we rise up here in Christ Jesus. Thank you, man. You're going to need to let me borrow that jacket. Amen. Thank you, Isaac. So, so that's how we should see ourselves 
in Christ. That's how we belong in him. And we, uh, we have to walk that out every day. Yes, that's right. We take up our cross to follow him. Come on. We choose to do that. And, and I, you know, I've been there. Please, let's not be hard on ourselves. Being hard on ourselves and replacing ourselves or replacing Jesus with our performance. Yes. Think about that. What is there to be hard on yourself for when he took the hardness, the, the rejection, the guilt? Yes. But as we think on him, he, not you, he will keep you in perfect peace yes. when your mind is stayed on him. Yes. Stayed. That's right. Not temporary, just stayed. Come on. Matthew chapter 16, verse 19 in the Amplified says, I will give the keys of the kingdom, Pastor Shannon touched on this, of heaven. And whatever you bind, declare to be improper and unlawful on earth, must be what is already bound in heaven. Whatever you loose and declare lawful on earth must be what is already loosed in heaven. I was talking well, with a friend of mine earlier uh, last week concerning the scripture, and she said something that blessed me, and I was like, man, that was really good because a lot of people don't understand this. It's like... This is true right now. How it is in heaven, whatever is bound in heaven must be what's already declared and, and um, whatever you buy declared to be improper and unlawful on earth must be what is already done in heaven. In other words, if it's not in heaven, you can declare it unlawful right here on earth. You have the right to declare that. You have the right to walk in that. But what is already bound in heaven and whatever, is, uh, whatever you lose, declare, unlawful, declare lawful on earth must be, or must be what is already loose in heaven. Loose healing, loose joy, loose peace. All of that has already been loosed in heaven because it's loose there and I have authority. I loose it now in my life. Yes. Right now. Yes. Psalms uh, chapter 63, and David wrote this while he was in the wilderness. David wrote this song while he's in the wilderness in the New King, King James Version. Psalm 63, and let's start with verse number six. Thank you. They do just such an awesome job there. Uh, it's verse number six that says, when I remember... What's the other word can we, we can put there? Oh. You guys are so good. <laughs> when I recall you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night. Yeah. It's, you know, sometimes it's at night when you're by yourself. Even if you have other people in the house and you're up dealing with a worry, a care, a concern, and the family sleep. Or you live by yourself. It's in that nighttime, Dave is talking about, when it's quiet. When you're thinking about it, you're not at work, your mind is there. Just wanting to run and worry. It says, I meditate on you in the night, watches, because you have been my help. Amen. In other words, Dave is saying, I've been there before. I recall you been my help before when it's been dark. Therefore, in the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. I choose to rejoice. That's what he's saying. I choose to rejoice. So you may not be able to recall a particular scripture, but you, you can recall an experience that the Lord has, has came through for you in the past and he's the same God today. In other words, you know, it's like, hey, I, don't, I just don't know the word of God like that. But just, I'm telling you, 
I'm, because I know from experience, because the word of God says it, if you just think, if you just think, if you just meditate, if you just recall, no matter what's going on in your life, how good God is and how good he's been. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit on the inside of you is like, yeah, boy, go, boy, go. Yeah, girl, go, girl, go. Because he's, he's, he's going to encourage you. you. You're going to where in your thoughts, in your meditation, you're going where peace resides. You're going where love resides. You're going where joy resides. You're going where peace resides. You're taking yourself there. You're going from here to here. Because this one will go crazy. But in here, I'm recalling. I'm recalling. And next thing you know, like the old song says, something on the inside, working on the outside. And oh, what a change in my life. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. But, it's, but it, it starts, we have to make that decision to recall, to go there. And that's what David did. He, he recalled, he went there. Look at Psalms uh, 42. Psalms 42. Amen. The word of God is so, so good. And we, we, we have to give the word of God first place. We must give the word of God first, first place. Please, I'm, I'm asking you. If you're born again, if you're born again, it's according to scripture, according to what has taken place in your life, you may not believe this, but you love the word of God. You enjoy the word of God. You love it. You can't get enough of it. You say, no, that, no, you're born again. You're a new creature. No, Jesus said he's going to take this word and reveal it to you. Yes. But start somewhere. And as you read the word of God in and with the Holy Spirit, the more you eat, the more you want to eat. Yes. Because, you know, you can only have so much from pastor, mama, daddy, husband, wife, <laughs> grandma, and them. And we got to get this word for ourselves. Yes. But, but even if you don't know scripture, if you just turn your heart towards him, yes. he'll encourage you right where you're at. Right. Psalms 42 and verse number uh, five. Psalms 42 and verse number five. It says, why? Is this what you th he's talking? Man, it's so good. I love this. It says, why are you cast down, oh, my soul? Come on. It's, it's amazing. He's, he's first, he's talking to his mind first. Now pay attention. I'm only going to read, I think, two verses. Stay with me. He says, why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted? In other words, uh, some of the definitions for disquiet is, is afflicted with or marked by trouble, uneasiness, anxiety, grief. Why are you marked by this? Why are you dwelling on this within me? Hope in God. I shall yet praise him. In other words, yet means right now. I ain't waiting for nothing to change. I shall yet praise him in my muck. I shall yet recall. I shall yet remember. I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Don't get that confused. I, his countenance doesn't change, but you represent him. For the help of his countenance flow into you. I shall yet, so he speaks to his mind first, and then he talks to his God next. Verse number six. Oh, my God. My soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I will recall. Yeah. Glory to God. I will remember from the land of Jordan. So now he starts naming areas where I remember when you was good back then. I remember when you delivered back then. I remember, I remember, I recall how good you was Back then, even when I didn't see a way out, you came through. So this is what he gets ready to do. He recalls verse number six again. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, a previous past experience of deliverance and answered prayer. 
and from the height of Hermon, a previous past experience of deliverance and answered prayer. From the hill of Mitz, Mitzar, a previous past deliverance and experience from answered prayer. He talks to his mind. Then he talks about or to his God. We, 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 listen, if we sit on our gluteus maximus and wait, we're going to be sitting there until our legs get numb. And we're going to be saying, God, why ain't you doing anything? Why haven't you done anything? Now, I know, and you all know, that have kids. When your kids are doing stuff, that you know that they shouldn't be doing. Are right. they're not, <laughs> he's saying all right. <laughs> Are they're, they're not doing something that you know they should be doing. And you have given them instruction. Yes. Yeah, that's good. That's good. You don't wish bad on them. Right. It's your child, you love them. That's right, yeah. You've already told them. Yes. You've already warned them. Yeah. This is going to hurt. <laughs> but they don't listen. I've been there. I didn't listen. Got caught by the Orange County deputy, remember? <laughs> so God, he's not wishing hurt. He's not wishing pain. That's right. Come on. But we got the, a part to play. We have to line up with him. We have to listen to him. He said, if you not just be willing... And obedient. You're going to eat the good of the land. If you be willing and obedient, you're going to eat the good of the land. James chapter uh, 1. Give me two more scriptures and I'll be done. James chapter 1. But two more passages. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Maybe they should sure get it right. Y'all going to check out. If you ain't checked out already. James chapter 1, verse number 12. Verse number 12, it says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation to quit. Blessed is the woman who endures temptation to quit. For when he or she is, uh, has been approved, and don't get that uh, mixed up. You know, you already approved in Jesus Christ. Okay, so, so you've already been approved. Really, you want to think of it as, as you've, you've passed the test of your faith, similar to like what Jesus did, you know, when he was tempted. Right. And he spoke the word, the word spoke the word. You know, he approved, he approved himself. You, you've been approved, has been approved. He will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. In other words, you approve, you establish yourself in the authority that's already been given. Verse number 13, it says, let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he or she is first drawn away of their own desires. And while they're drawn away of their own desires, then they're enticed back here. When they're drawn away of their own desires. Then when desire has conceived, it gives, forth, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Skip down to, um, just to move forward here. Verse number 22 says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only. Don't deceive yourself. Deceiving yourself. In other words, faith is an act. It's an act. You act in faith. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. He observes himself and goes away and immediately forget what kind of man he was. Notice it says he was. In other words, positionally, nothing changes. But when you get into this word and then you allow yourself or allow myself to get out of this word up here, I forget who I was. 
while I was here. And I realized, in other words, you can be like the, like the son was there and he remembered, he recalled, but did his position change back home? He was still the son. The father didn't look at him in any lesson. Y'all with me? So it doesn't, it's not something that happens spiritually. That's something that happens in our mind. Look at verse number 25. But he who looks continually into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and be not a forgetful here, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. You're already blessed. It's just you taking part in what's already been done. You laying hold of what's already taken place. Last scripture I want to read to you in Psalms. Uh, 103. Psalms 103. Hallelujah. Psalms 103. You can't, you can't whisper this one. You got to say it a little loud. So don't get nervous. I'm just going to raise my voice a little bit. Because when I read this, I'm like, oh, God. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all that is, is, is within me, bless his holy name. Amen. He's telling his soul, he's telling his mind, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and recall or forget not all his benefits. You, some of the jobs you may work on, it's like, what type of benefits do they have? They don't compare to the benefits that the father had. Check out his benefits. And then he goes on to say, he says in verse number two, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Recall his benefits. Then he starts from verse number three on, and he lists at least 21 benefits. Need to look at the benefits later. Because if I read them, I may, I may exit the building. <laughs> I mean, this had me shot to my, 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 my sleep clothes, my, my PJs. Mm-mm, good. The word of God is mm-mm, good. But listen, that excitement is there all the time. Are you going to be excited all the time? No. You know. In other words, you're going to have to make yourself you have to take yourself there. That's right. Remember when, when Jesus found out about Lazarus and it says Jesus wept? He wept because death is ugly. He wept because they were hurting. But what did he do before he raised Lazarus from the dead? He looked up to his father. He refocused. He already knew what he was going to do. But moments later, or moments before that, he was weeping. So you're going to weep. You're going to hurt him. Things are going to come. People going to say stuff and do stuff. Family members going to say stuff and do stuff. You know? But you need to recall. You need to remember. Is God before you? Who or what can be against you? He says, with long life shall I satisfy you and show you, show you the salvation that you have, who you are in him. We need to make the choice. If we're going to live, we have to choose to live. You know, so you, some of us may have 30, 40, 50 more years. You know, I, like I talked to Norm about his mom. She's turning 100. Right? Next month. Amen. She's turning 100 next month, right? What, what about when she was 50 and she was faced with stuff? You know, she had 50 more years left on this earth to live. She didn't know it. You know, in other words, you know, she's taking one day at a time. But we have to choose to live. We have to choose to lay hold of eternal life. Grab hold of it. Encourage ourselves in the Lord. Amen? Amen. There's an old song. I'm not going to sing it. Neither is my wife. Neither one of us, neither one of us can sing. I mean, was saying, I want to make sure I get that right. Well, she, she says she can sing, praise the Lord. 
You know, some of y'all remember this song here, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. The song says, when I recall of the goodness of Jesus, just think on it, think on it, think on it. All he's done for me, think on it, recall it, remember it. Yes. Uh, as I think about that, my soul cries out from the inside, hallelujah, in the midst of any circumstance. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. And a few chapters before that, it said, I will lift my hands and praise the Lord because I choose to. I'm just asking you this morning to recall, even if you're in a touch, tough situation, I recall how good Father God is, how good Daddy is, how good He has been. He's the same today, yesterday, and forever. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you. We, we praise you. We honor you. We glorify you. Holy Spirit, thank you for bringing back to our remembrance, Scripture, experiences, times when you've brought us out. You've given us a, a word in due season that, will lift, that lifted us. You're the same. We give you praise and glory that there's no defeat in us. Because as you are, so are we right now in this world. We choose to lay hold. The violent, we choose to take it by force. Just take what already belongs to us. We thank you for that. Hallelujah. And if there's anyone that here that doesn't know Father God, don't have a relationship with him, you can just ask him right now at this moment. He said, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Lord, I confess you as Lord. I receive you as my Lord. Thank you for coming into my life, giving me not just eternal life, but joy and peace and life down here on this earth now. Become my Savior now in the name of Jesus. I receive you. And, and if there's anyone here, even if you prayed that prayer, and it's important that you come forward. I'm going to ask those of you that are able to stand, if you would stand, as we prepare to dismiss. We have amazing prayer ministers here that wants to uh, minister to you. So don't walk out the doors without taking advantage of what has already been provided naturally and spiritually. Uh, God has a word for you. Amen. Are you going to make your mind up to recall? Yes. Hallelujah. God is a good God. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and disconnect for now, but don't walk out that door if you want prayer now. Come forward and speak to one of these uh, prayer ministers. Don't forget, guys and girls, we're going to um, uh, clear out these tables in the back, so just be mindful of what's taking place up here. Just from this back row going back, clear out the chairs to bring in the tables to put the chairs back around the tables. Amen. God bless you.